Hello guys, welcome to the webinar. Um, the topic today is uh, we'll, we'll cover X-ray. Uh, that's a brand new product from Cheerfrog. Well, it's not brand new, it's been a year old now. So we'll talk about how X-ray works, what X-ray does, and how it uh, uh, stays ahead in, in the space uh, that it competes in. Okay, um, before I, I uh, get started, um, I, I quickly want to go over the agenda and uh, quickly go, want to go over uh, the introduction. So myself, Raghav Baldania, I'm part of the solutions team at JFrog. Um, the primary role uh, on, on my end is to work with customers for all the architectural needs for the, their solutions and uh, work with them for onboarding and um, any expansions or, or um, scaling plans with, with the JFrog products. And um, Every now and then I also do these kind of webinars, so feel free to send me a message if you want to learn more about any of the topics. I'll be more than happy to cover those in, in the upcoming series. Okay, so uh, moving moving on. The I'm expecting you guys are familiar with JFrog products by now. Our flagship product is Artifactory, uh, and then we also have uh, other products like Mission Control, uh, that manages all the artifact instances. Then we also have a really cool product called Bintray uh, that kind of helps uh, customers deliver their binaries to end customers because it kind of sits on the uh, Akamai CDN. So the delivery of your binaries is really easy now. Um, so what customers told us uh, that uh, even though this is all good, this is all so much better than having nothing, but uh, we need something more. Like we need, this is this is something uh, that we need on top of the existing JFrog platform. And this evolved, this request kind of evolved into X-Ray, where um, X-Ray comes in, sits on top of Artifactory, helps you in terms of providing full insight and gives you full visibility on how your packages are uh, vulnerable or how your packages are impacting your other ecosystem. Like there are tons of scanners in the market who, who will tell you what kind of vulnerabilities there are outside, what kind of vulnerabilities you have in your packages, but nobody, actually nobody tells you how that one vulnerable package affects your entire ecosystem because uh, uh, in a large organization, it's very, very, very common to have uh, package sharing. Like if you are using some sort of library, a uh, very common example would be your or open source libraries or your uh, OS package libraries. Now these kind of libraries are very common across the board, right? So nobody tells you how that one library is affecting the, the entire ecosystem or entire infrastructure that you have. So that is kind of the pain point that X-Ray is trying to address uh, in this space. And beyond that, it also addresses all the licensing concerns, open source licensing concerns and security concerns. So this is kind of the whole uh, ball game that X-Ray plays into. Uh, we will talk more about this as we move forward uh, in terms of architecture, in terms of workflow, and in terms of use cases that are covered by, by X-Ray. So, what is X-Ray, right? Uh, the, the first question comes in. So as I mentioned, that X-Ray kind of sits on top of your artifactory system to make sure all the artifacts that you have, irrespective of package type, all the artifacts that you have in your artifactory are secure, are free of any vulnerabilities. Um, and and X-Ray also uh, works with Jenkins. And right now it works with Jenkins, but soon enough we are rolling out support for all other CI servers. So what it does, is it also talks directly to Jenkins uh, in terms of making sure that all the binaries or all the packages or the dependencies that Jenkins is consuming are free of any vulnerabilities. Um, on the other hand, you also have flexibility to allow or to build something um, yourself and then have it scanned by X-ray before pushing it to your production repositories in Artifact. Right? So it's, it's kind of a two-way uh, scanning you can do or, or just one-way scanning you can do. Now, how X-ray sits in the bigger picture? Um, as you can see, we already had JFrog Artifactory, we already had Bintray, and we already had Mission Control. Um, and Artifactory, being a universal binary repository manager, it supports all kind of package types, right? It supports more than 25 package types. Um, that's kind of really universal in the market space right now. And um, what, X what Artifactory also does is it talks to the entire ecosystem of CI CD that you have. Uh, so basically right from your source code management tool to your CI servers, to your QA frameworks, to your deployment tools, and to your orchestration tools. Every 
aspect of your of your uh, CI CD pipeline would be touching Arti Factory. Now, X-ray being sitting on top of Arti Factory, it means that all these uh, endpoints that you have connecting to Arti Factory would eventually talk to X-ray as well. So X-ray kind of makes sure that all these elements that are contacting X Arti Factory are kind of free of any response, any vulnerabilities, and are really secure to use. Um, so X-ray gives you that flexibility for either having your security policies much, much tighter, or you can loosen up as you want. Um, so coming into the, the platform where um, it, it shows that as your developer team or as your software engineers, as your uh, core component teams are writing codes, um, as soon as they are checking the code to your VCS, uh, the, the general flow is your, your version control system will trigger the automated build on your CI servers and your CI servers will resolve bills from Artifactory. It resolves dependencies and all the requirements from Artifactory. Now, those dependencies that Artifactory is supplying, um, you have two options, either to make sure that those are really, really secure so CI servers are only fetching the artifacts that are okay to use. They are approved to use, right? They are, they are not uh, uh, something that is not scanned and uh, you don't know what's going on there, right? So it gives you that, that level of visibility, that level of uh, uh, confidence. Okay, my, all the packages that I'm supplying to my Jenkins environment, uh, it, it's actually uh, okay to use. And, and when I say okay to use, it means that it, it's either okay to use on the... Uh, vulnerability side, there are no severities uh, attached to it, or on the licensing side, because uh, as as more and more organizations are going towards using open source packages, there are also a lot of uh, governance around it. There are lots of lot of legal issues around it as well, right? So you want to make sure that your licensing is also compliant. You are only using licenses that are that are. Uh, uh, green signal by your legal team or your, or your compliance team. So having these kind of uh, models set on your ecosystem is also really important. So X-Ray comes in and helps you do or helps you cover those kind of use cases. And then when you are when you are pushing builds to Artifactory, when you're pushing your artifacts to Artifactory, your QA teams can come in. Um, they can they can grab the builds, do their changes, uh, do their testing, and then supply the metadata back to Artifactory. And then with the continuous integration that we have between Artifactory and Mintray, you can roll out your binaries to your customers or production environments uh, through Mintray directly. Um, if you are someone who is rolling out into your production environment locally, uh, then you can use several deployment tools or several production tools uh, like Chef or Puppet or Ansible or, or any other provisioning tool that you are using uh, to grab the binaries from Artifactory and start deploying. So as you can see, X-Ray kind of makes sure that your end-to-end -end process right from your CI servers grabbing dependencies to your uh, provisioning tools grabbing artifacts from Artifactory, everything is secured. Now, just briefly touching over how X-Ray talks to your CI CD environment is that when you are uh, doing builds on your Jenkins, you know, when you are doing your continuous builds on Jenkins, what Jenkins does is Jenkins grabs their binaries and dependencies from Artifactory. Um, now you have policies set on Artifactory via X-Ray, or you can set policies directly on X-Ray, or you can set it on Jenkins. Either way, right? Uh, it, it supports full flexibility on on where you want to do those scans. But eventually, those scans are done, and then you decide what kind of severe severe artifacts you want to uh, let go through. For example, um, you can have minor uh, CVIT artifacts go through. You, you don't care about minor and major CVIT, but you do care about going uh, critical, critically severe artifacts to Jenkins. In that case, you can block those kind of artifacts um, directly from Artifactory, directly from X-Ray, or directly from Jenkins, either way, right? So these kind of uh, automated flow can be established from your Jenkins uh, file itself. So basically your Jenkins pipeline can, can take care of this end-to-end -end security model that can talk to Artifactory and talk to X-Ray and make sure that all these pieces are aligned before you publish your build to Artifactory and, and you are moving forward in that uh, uh, release cycle. Now, apart from doing, doing these kind of scannings, what X-Ray offers you is that it can offer a continuous scan. Uh, when I say continuous scan, it means that any new content change happening on your Artifactory instance any new content change happening on the source of information, for example, the uh, JX-Ray, that is the, the vulnerability database that X-Ray has. So any new 
change that happens on either side will trigger a, a scan. So X-ray is going to scan your artifacts no matter where the change is to make sure that new vulnerability that is found is not infecting any of your artifacts or the new artifact that is coming in is, is not already infected by any existing vulnerabilities, right? And based on this uh, use case, it's going to throw out an alert and, and again, you have several options in setting up the alerts as well. We'll talk about that as we move forward, but this is the use case that, that you can get. And eventually, you can also block the artifact directly from X-ray uh, going into a Jenkins environment so that your production build that is happening won't get any vulnerable artifacts so that your Jenkins build will fail. And then with the help of webhooks, you can also trigger a Jira, for example, from that fail build so that whoever is triggering that build, whoever is the component owner of that build, would get the Jira assigned to him that, hey, your build failed. This is the reason why it failed. You are using these kind of libraries, which is having these, these sort of issues. So he will get full visibility on why his build is failing, what kind of changes he needs to make, and what kind of artifacts he wants to use, or he has to use in order to, to, to move his build forward, right? So these kind of full end-to-end -end automated flow would be provided with the help of X-Ray and, and Artifactory uh, working on top of your Jenkins environment. Okay, um, so without without further ado, I want to exp I, I want to show you how X-Ray works, uh, what it how it does what it does. So what X-Ray will do is, regardless of your package type. Uh, it doesn't matter how complex your package type is. It could be a simple jar file or it could be a really complex Docker image with multiple layers and multiple subcomponents and, and very um, uh, multi-tiered uh, components, right? So what, what X-Ray does is X-Ray is going to tear apart each and every uh, layer to its sub-layers and sub-components and, and so on until it hits the bottom for each package type, right? So now it has found out what kind of components you have and then moving forward is going to scan those components individually. So you may have one Docker container, one Docker image with, with hundreds of components, right? Then X-Ray is not going to scan that one Docker container as one artifact. It's actually going to scan that as 100 different components. What this does is this allows X-Ray to create component graphs for each and every component, which in turn is going to keep updating itself as new relationship changes, as new metadata changes for that particular component. Now, a really brief example would be uh, you are using a Docker image which has a tar file. That tar file has a war file. That war file can have a jar file and a an, an JavaScript file, for example. As part of that jar file, you may also be using some other uh, components like common I.O. library. Now, if that library has some issues, then what it's going to do is create a component graph for that particular library. And then in future, if you use that library in some other Docker containers or in some other builds or in some other packages, then X-Ray is going to update that component graph with these new relationship as well. So as you, as you keep using a particular package, X-Ray keeps updating the component graph. So it knows in real time what kind of relationship a package has with your ecosystem. Right. So if, if in future, if something is found with this package, it can let you know right away. There is no lag. There is no delay in, in calculating those kind of uh, information and giving out to you. It's all real time and it, it, it gives you those kind of informations right away. Because we do understand that an enterprise can have millions and millions of artifacts and calculating these kind of artifacts in batch. Uh, would not work anymore. You have to be able to calculate these kind of issues and these kind of relationships uh, on the fly. So that is what X-Ray does with the help of these component graphs. Now, the flow is something like this. If a new external vulnerabilities are found, X-Ray would be able to grab those vulnerabilities, scan the artifacts for, for against this vulnerability and give you the, the full information on if anything is found, uh, um, is, if basically a match is found between artifact and uh, vulnerability. On the other hand, it can also allow you to create custom issues. So for example, if you are using a JDK, uh, for example, and then your application is running slow because of a particular version of JDK. 
and your performance teams tells you that we we are not supposed to use this particular version of JDK because it's slowing down our, our overall uh, performance. In that case, you can mark these kind of issues on that particular artifact, that particular JDK. That okay, X-ray will be able to scan any artifact that is using or that is connected to this JDK because it's not supposed to be used. So in that case, it will scan everything and let you know that okay, these 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 artifacts are using this JDK. And then you can mitigate those issues by either upgrading the version of JDK or eliminating the relationship with, with that particular artifact, right? So these kind of custom issues can also be allocated to X-Ray and X-Ray can work with, with those kind of information. Now, this, this was about scanning. This was about the um, kind of issues that you can, you can work with. On the other hand, X-Ray also allows you to do kind of licensing as well, as we talked about. It will be able to scan all the open source licensing and then allow you to either block or allow certain licenses so that uh, you are really license compliant in your environment. And then at, at the end, it can also give you the report uh, based on licenses. What kind of licenses are you using in your environment? What kind of uh, compliance policies are you adhering to, right? So this kind of information can also be uh, collected from X-Ray. And at the end, when everything is done, it's going to give you an option to, to trigger out an alert based on an email, based on a chatbot, uh, based on a webhook, um, or, or just uh, submitting those kind of information to your CI servers so that they can decide if they want to or they don't want to allow the artifact to go into that build. Okay? The flow works something like this. Any artifact that comes into, X comes into Artifactory, Artifactory will, will supply that artifact to X-Ray. X-Ray is going to index that artifact and get rid of the actual binary. So it's not storing all your artifacts. It's not going to consume the same amount of space that your artifactory is consuming. Because a lot of people uh, asked me earlier that uh, if my artifactory is using 10 terabyte of storage, do I need the same storage for X-Ray? The answer is no, because X-Ray is not actually storing those binaries. It, it will grab the binary, index it, and then garbage the binary, right? So it's not going to store everything. It's on, only storing the metadata and updates the metadata on the DB so that it, uh, it's really storage efficient. But what happens is once you have this metadata, once you have this component graphs, it kind of plays around with those graphs to give you information and give you relationship information and give you vulnerability information later on uh, when any new content change happens on the DB or on the artifactory side. And, and once this is done, the, the actions get triggered. So whatever actions you have configured for email or chatbot or webhook would be triggered uh, and then. So this is, this is the infrastructure or this is the, the architecture that X-Ray utilizes. Uh, as you can see, X-Ray is comprised of almost nine microservices. Um, what it does is it, it has six of them in-house and three of them are external microservices. Now all these are packaged as one container and then delivered to customers. So if you are about to install X-Ray, then these are the components that you'll see getting installed, right? And on the cloud side, X-Ray has a centralized database called JX-Ray, as you can see on the diagram here, jxray.jfrog.io. This is our centralized uh, database for information, for vulnerability information. Now, these data, this database collects information from all other open source database, uh, databases like NVD, um, Apache, or CentOS, or Debian, or Ubuntu, and uh, NPMJS, and Sneak, and so on, right? So all these kind of uh, informations are, are uh, collected uh, almost four times a day. So this database is updated for every four hours. Um, and then your local X-Ray instance would be synced with this database twice a day, right? So you, you will always have the latest information. And on the other hand, it also talks to Bintray, uh, which is again hosted by JFrog, for two things. One is for obviously distribution of X-Ray, but secondly, the distribution of components, uh, because uh, for example, JCenter is, is the largest Maven depository uh, out there right now, right? So that is hosted on Bintray. So Bintray has this extensive information about components licensing for all the Maven related artifacts. So those kind of components uh, information and licensing information is collected from Bintray so that your local x instance has uh, this rich set of information for jars and wars uh, and Maven artifacts but everything else is coming from JXray. So these are the two external communication that your database or that your local X-ray instance will have. Um, and then we have uh, three external microservices. One is RabbitMQ that obviously manages your queue. Um, we also have Postgres uh, that 
keeps track of your um, component graphs that we talked about earlier. On the usage side, you can utilize X-Ray with uh, the help of UI or with the help of REST API. Uh, we have really extensive REST API endpoints open up, so you can leverage those REST APIs to automate each and every workflow that you are desiring to use with X-Ray. Now, talking about component graphs, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is kind of uh, uh, a repeat of that information that it is actually going to tear apart the layers, the subcomponents, the, the sub subcomponents, and give you a really precise information about the entire dependency tree or the entire component tree. And then it doesn't matter what package type you're using, X ray kind of supports uh, jars, wars, RPMs, Nougat galleries, Debian packages, any kind of OS packages. So, Debian, Ubuntu, Red Hat. Uh, PyPy packages, Docker containers, obviously, uh, Vagrant boxes, NPM or uh, JavaScript packages, any any kind of node packages kind of supported with X-Ray. So coming down deeper into those component graph, so what X-Ray does is X-Ray kind of, uh, X-Ray will do this deep uh, recursive scan of these artifacts that, that are indexed uh, in X-Ray together, right? So what it does is it collects the dependency information for these components and subcomponents and will find the correlation between them and create these kind of sub or, or component graphs. And then this ensures that all your binaries that are indexed are picked up for analysis, right? Uh, you can have um, tens of thousands of libraries or binaries coming to X-Ray. Um, and there may be unique libraries that are inter not intertwined, but interdependent on each other. In that case, X-Ray is going to find out that, okay, these libraries have this kind of relationship and these go together on this component graph. So it makes sure that all these binaries are picked up for analysis, and then it is going to embed them together in, in this uh, uh, complex component graph. So in this process, it will show you what kind of correlation these artifacts have, right? So as you can see on the screen, I have a Docker base layer, uh, and, and most likely that, that Docker base layer is again utilized by other two Docker layers, right? Uh, so maybe you can have other two Docker layers uh, can be sitting on top of this common base layer. Um, but again, these are two different Docker images. So in that case, you'll have different component graphs for them. But eventually each component graph will know the relationship between, between all these subcomponents you have. And then eventually you have your components within those layers like jars and wars and dot gcs and, and JavaScript files and node files and so on. So these component graphs will be able to collect these information and, and combine them together and give you a really good insight on what kind of structure each component has uh, with respect to the other components related to that indexing mechanism. Okay. So there are a couple background tasks that X-Ray is going to do. So obviously first is indexing. Um, as I mentioned, X-Ray only talks to Artifactory, so you will decide what kind of indexing you want to do. You want to index one repository, you want to index multiple repositories, you want to index all the repositories within Artifactory. You want to index one build, uh, basically one project or, or one, one um, what do you call we call it as a project on Jenkins, but uh, any kind of build, or you want to index multiple builds or all the builds that are, that are coming onto Artifactory, right? So you have options uh, in terms of deciding what you want to index. Uh, and, and the reason that this flexibility is available because we do understand that you can have, again, millions of artifacts in Artifactory, not necessarily all of them are utilized in production environment or not necessarily all of them you want to keep a track of because uh, again, all these uh, tasks or all these um, uh, events that, that you are doing are tax heavy, right? None, none of them are free of charge. So you wanna make sure that you are not wasting your resource in scanning something that is not, not going to be utilized in future. So the next background task is the issue update. Um, as I mentioned, it's going to constantly talk to the centralized X-ray server and uh, the other source of information that you have attached to X-ray for gathering the, the issue updates and then scanning uh, accordingly with, with those issues to, to the artifacts that are indexed in the X-ray environment that you have. And based on that, uh, you have uh, watchers. So basically all these watchers are also rule-based watchers. So it means that you have criteria, criteria trigger watchers. Um, you want to trigger a watch if a new content is added to a repository that you have indexed in X-Ray. Or you want to trigger a watch because uh, a new content or new vulnerability or new issues were entered into your database, right? So it doesn't matter where the information changes, X-Ray is going to scan your artifacts 
uh, and make sure that everything is secure and none of the alerts are missed out. The other rule-based watch is the on-demand scan. You can now scan your build, your artifact, your libraries on demand and make sure that uh, something that you added um, is free of any vulnerabilities and then you can utilize it right away because you don't want to wait till the next uh, um, uh, build coming in or, and so on. So, so these kind of on demand use cases are also available with, with these kind of watchers. And then the, the on-demand impact analysis. Now this, this again propagates back to the component graph that we are talking about. Because X-Ray creates the component graphs for all these artifacts, it can now share these kind of information with you right away. So if you want to find out that uh, I am using a SSH library, which is used across the board with my thousands of uh, uh, Linux machines and thousands of developers, I want to upgrade the version of that SSH package. What do I do? How do I find out that what's the impact of that upgrade? What, what's the um, downtime uh, associated with that? Or what, how do I even scope the project, right? So these kind of information now can be found with X-Ray because X-Ray utilizes this, this information. X-Ray can tell you right away, though, okay, out of 100 million artifacts you have, these 10 million artifacts are affected by this SSH library. And so you can find out that this is my scope of project. My, this is the scope of the impact that's going to happen if I deprecate this library or if I upgrade this library. Okay. Um, and then we have reporting uh, associated with our uh, X-ray instance as well. So what it does is it's going to give you a full-fledged issue report. Uh, so basically, if an issue is affecting several artifacts, you will get this report. Uh, and then on the other hand, if a complex binary is scanned and an issue is found at some some very deep layer, X-ray is going to report you on that as well. So this, this uh, uh, content deep scanning is also as is also an integral part of your, your scanning mechanism. So this is this is the deep scan uh, that I was talking about. Uh, that uh, you you can have a Docker build. Now this is this Docker framework is my Docker build. And I have a, a layer within that which comprises of a war file and that war file comprises of multiple uh, common libraries and multiple dependencies that I'm using. In that case, uh, there is an issue found with this commons library, right? So as you can see here, X-Ray was able to get uh, all the way to that to that uh, component uh, layer and then give me that information. Okay, this component is found at this depth and this is the issue right so these kind of deep scanning uh, is also performed by x-ray and gives you that visibility okay this is the impact of the of a library in my entire build or in in my entire uh, complex image so once once it has found the issues once it has found the vulnerabilities then you have alerts uh, now as i mentioned earlier you can either set up an email alert or webhooks now webhooks are really powerful because the webhooks can allow you to trigger a jira on your jira board and assign it to the component owner who triggered the build eventually he will get the, the jira assigned to himself or you can set up a message bot uh, it means that uh, Slack bot, for example, any new vulnerability is found, any new issues are found, you can trigger a message bot or, or get a notification directly on Slack so that uh, you are also eliminating emails because I know emails are overplayed. Uh, at least everyone I know has, has their inbox filled with thousands of emails that are not even ready yet. So basically, uh, we don't want to spam yet another email if you don't wish to. So in that case, you can trigger a Slack bot and, and get notified about any issues right away. The other action that you can set up is the integration with your CI server. Uh, as I talked earlier with Jenkins, but but more and more CI servers are coming up uh, this quarter and next quarter. Um, so in that case, you can scan the artifact at a deploy phase, at a dependency management phase, or basically the, the entire production phase, right? So you can decide where you want to scan, how you want to scan, and how you want to block the artifact based on severity, based on the the package type based on the, the metadata associated with it and so on. Now, as I mentioned earlier, X-Ray does these kind of things irrespective of package type. Majority of the package types are available uh, or compatible with X-Ray right now. As you can see on the screen, we, we support NPM, Docker, uh, all the OS packages from Debian, or Ubuntu, or Red Hat, or, or JAR files, or War files, or, or basically your uh, Maven packages, your RPM packages, your NuGet packages, 
um, everything is supported so far uh, and it's working really really well for our customers they are really happy with this broader support that we have and it's not just about the support but it's about the the compatibility that uh, allows you to do any kind of bills any kind of platform modification and yet xray be able to scan those things for you index those things for you and then create this comprehensive component graphs so that you can have full insight on what kind of packages are being utilized what kind of relationships are being built and how am i getting affected by these new relationships or needs these new vulnerabilities or these new bills right now um in terms of uh, automation, as I mentioned earlier, X-Ray pro provides you with rich source of uh, open REST APIs, and all these REST APIs are really well documented. So they are they all can be found on our wiki. Uh, it, you can simply go to wiki.jfrog.com and and find the documentation for all our products. Um, and the unique aspect about JFrog is that we believe strongly on on the accessibility of this rest api so all these rest apis are internally contracted or so it means that we won't be deprecating any rest apis overnight if we plan to deprecate a rest api which is very 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 rare but if we decide to do that uh, we we are going to at least give a heads up to our customers six to eight months or nine months uh, in advance so that you know that something is going to change and you have ample ample time to to create a workaround on that Additionally, what we do is uh, you have this full access on performance, quality, and the uh, component information for any of these uh, uh, component graphs or any of these indexed artifacts, right? So now you can integrate your artifact instance, X-ray instance, and Jenkins instance end-to-end -end directly with REST API. You don't have to actually go to the UI and, and do all those things manually. In terms of sources, obviously, uh, you will have plenty of information and plenty of flexibility to kind of uh, take care of what kind of sources are being injected uh, for information, right? So obviously, X-Ray has inbuilt uh, database of itself. But on the other hand, it is also integrated with Sneak, for example, where uh, Sneak kind of uh, is a pioneer in NPMJS or, or basically NPM packages uh, or JavaScript packages, uh, vulnerability scanning and finding and issues with, with those kind of uh, NPM libraries. So X-Ray is now integrated with Sneak from the base layer. So from the ground up, the integration is done so that you don't have to actually integrate manually. It, it is there as part of the ecosystem already. So what Sneak will be able to provide is the continuous feed of information for any vulnerabilities and later on any remediation uh, policies that need to be set any remediation recommendations needs to be provided will also come from sneak right so you can get this full-fledged information from sneak for all your npm packages so this is one data source integration that we have uh, we also integrate with all other vendors for example black duck which is really popular uh, in enterprise market today a lot of people use black duck for a really rich source of information that it has People also use Aqua or White Source, for example. In that case, uh, because X-Ray is, is, is all about this engine, is all about this capability uh, for driving all these things, right? So it can integrate directly with all these external sources of information um, and give you the result or give you the scan uh, flexibility for all these kind of sources. And it will also be able to talk to your database. For example, if your security team is maintaining some sort of information, you can convert that information into an object that X-Ray will be able to consume and then scan against that source of information as well. So you have all these uh, options in terms of integration right out of the box. You don't have to do the integrations manually. It will be able to integrate through the API keys directly. So let me show you what X-Ray looks like right now. Um, and and walk you through the whole workflow. Okay, so this is the the home page of X-Ray. As you can see, uh, it's quite familiar or quite similar to to Artifactory. Um, obviously, on the screen here, you can see your recent alerts, your recent vulnerabilities, recent components, and so on. So you can you can basically find out what's going on at high level, and in terms of watches, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to uh, configure a watch. Basically, you configure a watch for what you want to scan. Right? Every action is a watch-based action. So you decide what you want to scan. So what's your target type? Uh, it could be a repository. Uh, in that case, I'll get an option to select my sub-target, that is a repository that I want to scan. 
I can scan a build. In that case, I will select what build I want to scan, right? I have currently four builds flowing into this environment, so I can scan any of those builds. Or I can scan all my builds. Basically, I, this will scan all the four builds that are coming in, or scan the entire artifact instance. So basically scan every single artifact, right? Now, let's take an example of scanning a build. I'm scanning my Docker build here. Now, uh, if you attended my previous webinar uh, that was about Docker life cycles and Docker pipeline, this is where I showed what kind of Docker pipeline I have. Now, this Docker app build is actually that same pipeline. So if you want to know more about this Docker app a pipeline, re please refer to my previous webinar that is available on YouTube and um, Bright Talk, basically. But uh, talking about this Docker build, give you a really high level overview of what it does is it has a base layer, base OS layer, and it captures a JDK on top of it. It will add Tomcat on top of it, and then it will add a war file on top of it. This is this is just my UI component that publishes Hello World, basically, right? So as you can see, the, it has these, these all these several different pieces coming together. Now, what if I'm only interested in the OS package? I want to make sure that all my OS libraries are secure. I don't care about war file. I don't care about the Tomcat. I don't care about JDK they are coming from secure sources so that's okay for me but I'm really concerned about the OS packages in that case I can set a filter to scan by package type in package type I will add my Debian OS there okay so it, by doing this what x-ray is going to do is x-ray is going to scan this build and narrow down the scan to this Debian package right so it is going to ignore my Tomcat, ignore my JDK, ignore my war file, and just give me the results on this uh, uh, Debian scan. On the other hand, I can scan by any other package type. Basically, as you can see, the list is really long here. You can scan by any of these package types, or you can scan by regular expression, or scan by properties. Uh, that is the very rich metadata information that you can have. Or you can scan by allowed licenses or banned licenses. So basically, for example, if my security team or legal team comes in and tells me that I'm not supposed to use AGPL licenses in my environment, in that case, I'll select this filter for AGPL licenses and set this scan. Now, this, this watcher is going to alert me every single time someone is using this AGPL license in this production build, right? So this gives you a really good insight on how a banned license is coming in and it's been utilized. So you can block that basically uh, doing that from X-Ray or doing that from Artifactory or doing that from Jenkins. And if you want to scan this entire build, you just ignore the filter altogether and it's going to scan this entire build. On the other hand, you can also scan based on or oh, sorry, you can also set filters based on severity. So for example, I want to be only notified for critical issues. I don't care about major or minor issues. Just let me know if there's a critical vulnerability in my package. In that case, you can set up filters based on vulnerabilities or severities here, right? So once you have these set, you'll set up an action. What do you want to do with this kind of alerts? So either get notified by email, get notified by a webhook so basically notified by a chatbot or a jira issue or any kind of other webhooks right and the ci integration that we talked about the jenkins integration so you can you can let jenkins know that okay this is the vulnerability found with this package um, and then you decide if you want to block it or unblock it so basically you have the ci integrations here right out of the box with with x-ray in terms of alerts, once the watcher is done, once the scanning is done, the alerts are thrown out. These are the alerts you will get, right? These kind of alerts you will get. Now, I have one of the alerts open up here for that particular uh, build that we are talking about, Docker app build. Now, take a look. This is the same uh, screenshot that I shared in my PowerPoint earlier, but uh, this is the alert screen here, right? So this is the full-fledged information of issues that are found. So as you can see at the top ribbon here, I have multiple issues found. Um, hopefully your production environment doesn't have this many issues, <laughs> but I have injected these issues for demo purposes. So as you can see here, it's going to collect all the issues and give me in one UI. So you can now know that what kind of issues are with your build and then the source of information for this issues as well. So for example, this issue is found on these components. So basically Apache and common components, and this is the NVD information for it. This is the CVE right here is the CVE number. The information is coming from NVD. Uh, CVID is critical. 
And then the other references are also found here. But basically, Cisco also announced this as vulnerable artifact, and more information can be captured here. And on the impact graph, as you can see here, it was able to find this commons library all the way deeper in my war file, which is hidden inside the layer of this particular Docker build. So this, this, this gives you a really good insight or visibility or where the vulnerabilities are found and where these issues are captured. Now let's take a look at this same commons uh, collections component, right? Uh, and find out what is the uh, relationship between this component and my other artifacts. So as you can see here, this is the component. On the right hand side, it's going to give me full information on that component. So the links to the file. So because this is coming from Artifactory, this URL or file path will take you directly to Artifactory there. It will also give you the table of versions, what kind of versions you are using in your ecosystem. Not necessarily the versions available outside on the internet, but these are the versions that you are using in your environment. And then it's going to give you the issues related to this component um, as this is the one that we saw on our previous page. And it's also going to capture the licenses associated with this component. Now on the left hand side is where the magic or interesting thing happens. Because this is an independent library, I don't have a directly associated child component or child node in here. But if I do, then under the descendants tab here, it's going to show me who else is directly underneath this component. On the ancestors tab is going to tell me that, okay, these other components, these other packages are utilizing this particular library. So now I know if I had 100,000 artifacts, out of those 100,000 artifacts, these five artifacts are getting impacted by this one library, right? So this is, as you can see, it didn't have to calculate anything. It didn't have to wait or, or find out this information. It is readily available. And it can also help you drill all the way at the top. Now, we know the Swamp of War file, we saw that on our Docker build, I know where this is coming from. This is my build, but I don't know what, what is this war file? Where is this coming from? Who is creating this? So I can drill all the way up. Now this is coming from a Gradle release webinar build. Now this build I know is, is part of my, my same project. So basically it gives you this kind of insight on who else is consuming this. So as you can see here, uh, this build is found on my build number nine for Gradle. That Gradle build is sitting inside my Docker layer. That Docker layer is sitting inside my Docker dev, Docker app build, uh, build number 44. And the latest manifest is coming from my Docker dev webinar build. So as you can see here, this is kind of insight that you get from this component graphs. All these heavy lifting that x does behind the scene for creating those component graphs, um, the results are shown here. As you can see, it's, it's really exhaustive, right? Um, and lastly, I also want to show you the reporting piece. It's going to give you a full license report uh, uh, utilization as well. So uh, on one hand, I can see what kind of licenses I'm using in my environment, uh, Apache and EPL for now. And on the second report, it will show me the, the compliance, what kind of band licensing I'm using in environment. Right now, my environment is really clean. Uh, I would love to see these kind of reports, right? Uh, nobody's using any band licenses, but if someone does, then you will get that reports here. There are other reports on security aspect. If you're higher up, so if your execs are looking for some sort of dashboard, they can take a look what kind of vulnerabilities and what kind of uh, uh, trends are going on in your environment. So uh, recent vulnerabilities, recent components, recent artifacts, uh, top five vulnerabilities, and these kind of information are available uh, right off the bat for the reporting aspect. And for the integrations, as you can see here, um, as I talked about those out of the box integrations, you can have any of these vendors connect directly to X-Way. So for a Black Duck, if I am already invested in Black Duck, I am using Black Duck for my um, environment for, or my IT team is using Black Duck, I can basically apply the API key here and the URL here and have X-Way connected to Black Duck right away. I don't have to do any kind of funky thing. Same thing goes with White Source or same thing goes with Aqua, right? Uh, you apply the API key and the URL and you are good to go. And if you are using, uh, a custom integrations, then basically you you uh, set up that integration in a way that you can have the API key talk to Artifactory and X-Ray here, and then connect the, the custom integrations that you want to connect to X-Ray. Okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint. So now let's talk about security. Um, security is really critical. We want to make sure that uh, um, we are, 
doing more than just being secure, right? Not just uh, catching the artifacts that are vulnerable. So in that case, uh, as I mentioned earlier, X-Ray is actually giving you full information or full insight, as we like to call it, on your component graphs. Um, this gives you a really good correlation information between your two components or multiple components. A, at the end of the day, it's going to be a many-to-many -many relationship, and we want to exploit that relationship. We want to find out what's going on there. So that kind of full insight is available for any aspect, security aspect or licensing aspect. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you can also create performance uh, issues as well. So create those kind of custom issues Let X-Ray utilize its engine and find out what's going on and give you a full insight on those performance uh, issues as well. And then it is also going to able to give you a full set of information or full set of uh, um, insight on what kind of dependency relationship you have with any build. Um, you can be using a build with multiple components, uh, which can be a couple locals, couple uh, external components, and you can find out that uh, obviously this local components I know I'm aware of, but I'm really interested in the, these third party components are coming in. So X-Ray can tell you that, okay, these components are good to be utilized and then you can use it. So, so use it only after you scan it, right? So these kind of uh, use cases can also be covered with X-Ray. So now let's bring all together, um, bring our entire ecosystem together for Artifactory, X-Ray, Bintray, Mission Control, and find out how the entire workflow works, right? So coming back to our core software development team who is, who is writing code, who is doing their builds. Now that software development team is writing their codes locally. They are doing their local builds. As part of their local builds, they are, they are declaring their local dependencies, right? Now these local dependencies can be in form of any kind of package type. These local dependencies would be coming from Artifactory. Um, and then Artifactory can, can only, well, you can configure this supply of dependencies in a way that it, it will only be supplied if they are being okay to use from X-Ray. They are, they are being greenlit from X-Ray. No issues are found, no vulnerabilities are found. Then you supply that to your dev teams and then they will do the local build. If there is a remote dependency involved, uh, it's going to follow the same procedure. Artifact will download the remote dependency for you, scan it. If it's okay to use, then supply it to your local builds. Once your local builds are done, you submit your code to your VCS. Your VCS in turn will trigger the, the automated build on your choice of CI servers. Now, because Artifact already knew before that these are the dependencies that you utilized in your local build, so most likely your production build, your CI server build will have same set of dependencies, right? Um, so now that dependencies are again coming from our factory, but at this point, these are all coming from local copy. Um, in case if you use the remote uh, repository for dependency management, those remote artifacts, those remote dependencies are cached locally. So now there is no latency involved in delivery of those dependencies. So your, your CI server builds are much faster now. Uh, there is no latency involved. There is no time wait involved. So your bills are done. Once your bills are done, you will be deploying those bills back to Artifactory. So that, that way Artifactory can be your single source of truth for your bills, for your dependencies, for your libraries, for your binaries. And it can also act as your single source of information for your uh, bills. So by with the help of deployment of bills to Artifactory, making Artifactory act as your deployment target, you are now submitting all these metadata that are associated with your build. Now it could be your environment variables, it could be your system variables, it could be your dependency tree, it could be your uh, third party components, anything, right? Anything that you have associated with the build is now captured with Artifactory. So Artifactory makes sure that this build, if you want to reproduce this build after five years, you have every piece of information that is required to reproduce this build. So this is really uh, neat and unique to make sure that your bills are now reproducible bills. So because Artifactory is a single source of information for your bills, your QA can now talk to Artifactory directly. Grab the binaries, do the testing, and submit the metadata back to Artifactory so that now Artifactory knows which build is a good build, which build is a bad build, which build can move forward in your pipeline. So you can promote that build to the further stage, and then your deployment tools, your orchestration tools can come in, grab these binaries, and start doing the deployments. Or 
as we mentioned earlier, you can push that directly to Bintray and, and in turn, Bintray will be able to push that to your end customers, your IoT devices, your end uh, devices. So all that can connect to Bintray and grab those binaries, right? So as you can see here, the entire ecosystem, JFrog, Artifactory, JFrog, Bintray, JFrog X-Ray, they all combine together, provide you this unique platform for your end-to-end -end delivery model, okay? Any questions? Um, I know it was a lot of information to cover. Uh, if you have any questions, we have uh, five to 10 minutes to answer those questions. So feel free to shoot me your questions into Q&A tab and I will be able to answer those questions. One thing I want to show before we jump into Q&A um, is that our annual user conference is coming up in Napa uh, just two weeks from now. So very exciting, very exciting. Uh, well, firstly, it's, it's the location, right? It's Napa. So come on, you, you don't need an excuse to get out there and have some fun. But obviously, it's more of a DevOps-centric conference. So you won't see uh, fancy marketing booths there, uh, fancy people pitching you their products. But it's all about meeting uh, experts from DevOps industries and mingling together and discussing use case with each other and finding out what kind of cool stuff people are doing uh, at their at their sites and we have a really cool lineup of panel speakers also uh, available that is going to be uh, talking two days in advance and then we also have a full day of training available so if you want to learn more about X-Ray if you want to learn more about our factory or Bintray or mission control or our future roadmap or, or these advanced integrations and advanced automations, uh, we will be teaching all these different classes as part of this training uh, day. So you can take a look at the schedule for the training. I'll be teaching one of this class. Uh, it's a full day class that I am taking um, that's going to talk about automations and integrations between your artifactory, X-Ray and your CI servers. So end to end, um, Commit to deploy, basically, uh, that's that's my title, and you'd be able to do all this with Docker. Um, so this is this is the highlight of my class. We are also having some other cool classes offered. So feel free to take a look at this uh, training schedule, webinar schedule, and obviously the the swamp up schedule. Tickets are going out really really soon uh, because it's just a uh, last week remaining. A lot of people are registering at the last moment, and we only have few spots available. Um, so feel free to uh, take a look and then I would, I would highly encourage you to sign up for the um, Swamp Up and, and I'll see you there. Any questions now? So one question I see, does it require a separate license to order X-Ray for existing Artifactory customer? Uh, the answer is yes, uh, X-Ray will, because X-Ray is an add-on, um, it does uh, comes with a very, very small cost. I think it's uh, tenth of the price of Artifactory instance. I, I'm not a salesperson, so I don't know the numbers on top of my head, but it's a very nominal cost that sits on top of Artifactory. So yes, the license is separate. Uh, feel free to reach out to me or um, anyone in JFrog and you'll be able to connect you to the right person um, in order to discuss the, the licensing for X-Ray. Okay. Right. Um, we have one more minute left. If you have any other question, please shoot me in. And the next question is, can we install X-Ray and Mission Control on the same machine? Uh, you can, yes, but I would not recommend doing or co-locating X-Ray with anybody because X-Ray is very resource heavy. There are special instructions for installing X-Ray, so I wouldn't recommend installing anything uh, with X-Ray. Uh, keep it separate, keep it uh, dedicated to the resource because uh, it's a mission critical application. So we want to make sure that uh, it has everything that it needs uh, in order to do what it does. So yes, it can be done, but it is not at all recommended. Okay. Um, I am almost out of the time. We are uh, right on the mark. So um, thank you guys for joining the webinar. Um, this webinar will be available shortly on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to read, re-go re it over again or it's also going to be available on Bright Talk uh, 
where we, we are hosting all our webinars moving on. So feel free to take a look at Bright Talk uh, platform and look for Artifactory or X-Ray uh, keywords and you'll be able to find our webinars there. Again, if you have any questions on anything, feel free to send me an email. My email is my first name, R-A-G-H-A-V, uh, and my initial for last name, so B, so R-A-G-H-A-V, B, at jfrog.com. I'll also put it on the screen here so that you can take a look. So that's my email. Um, either I can be found on LinkedIn, on Twitter, anywhere. So reach me uh, for any questions you have and I'll be more than happy to answer. All right, thank you so much for joining and you guys have a good day. Thank you.